Welcome to the Moral Marriage Podcast, guys, where we give it to you like it is. Now, so many people, so many people want more kids. How many babies would you have if we could? Oh, I always say 17. Uh, I'm going to say therapy sucks, but there's some great tools. Therapy sucks. You. There is a different kind of abuse, domestic violence, that can be a little bit more challenging to work with. I'm Cass. And I'm Catherine. If you don't burn every bridge or every boat, you will fail. It's very near and dear to my heart. You're going to hear why. Fuck your family. And by the way, when I say family, I mean your blood. I mean your adoptive. I mean your friends. We're moral marriage. Let's flip divorce statistics with the new marriage. All right. Positive, negative, and neutral. Go ahead. I would like to right now coin the term narc out. And I think that that is like uh, on the low end. Yeah. I think um, if we would have met. I'm Pentecostal, you guys. I should have gotten married at 17. I just didn't meet my husband. And also I was backsliding at the time. But I, not at 17, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I should have gotten married really young as a good Pentecostal girl and started pumping out babies. You guys have seen them. They have reality TV shows. I'm sure they're all Pentecostal. Okay. So here's the thing. We hear this all the time. People want more kids. Should we do it? Should we not do it? And so, you know, for us personally, going through another pregnancy doesn't seem worth it. You know, we have IVF babies, you know, like it, pregnancy not... was very mm -hmm. hard for me. And then also there's, let's talk about Kubad for a second. There's something called Kubad. Mm -hmm. Obviously it was coined by the French and it's when the man feels the things that the woman is feeling. So when I was pregnant, I had really bad sciatic pain and would pee my pants. Sometimes he didn't pee his pants, but I had, <laughs> I had all these, all these different issues that were going on with me. He had a sore back. He felt nauseous. It's, it's Kuvad. The, it's an actual thing where the husband will feel things that the woman is feeling. So not only was the pregnancy rough on me, it was physically really rough on him. And emotionally it was rough on him because I couldn't be there for him emotionally and physically the way that I wanted to because of how I was feeling. So not only is it, you know, I, I, I threw up from the time I was six weeks pregnant until the girls were four months old. And with Riddick, he was seven weeks old when I stopped puking. Now, Pregnancy if, is hard. Now, if you don't know our story, <clears throat> um, you know, we did IVF because um, I had had a vasectomy. Okay. And so we tried to reverse it. We did the IVF thing. And in there, we were really afraid. What if we couldn't have kids? I mean, you were, you were dying. Oh, to, my gosh. Yeah. I was so afraid that we couldn't have kids. Yeah. And it would, that would have been a huge sacrifice, especially because of how bad I was mm -hmm. with you, how toxic our relationship was and, and stuff. So in that time, though, you know, we talked about doing foster, foster care. We were going to adopt, right? adopt through, through, through the, the system. foster system. Yeah. And so we started to take the training and I, I just, I think luckily, I think I reflected and was like, some of the training was very triggering for me because of my upbringing. And I didn't think I could emotionally be there for children who needed a little bit more love and attention. A lot more love and you attention. Know? Yeah, yeah. A lot more. Yeah. yeah. And so we tabled that fast forward. We have our babies. And Catherine, you can see, you probably noticed all the animals were always, she's rescuing animals all the time. She's got this chicken thing going on. I'm um, pretty this soon we're going to have a zoo going on. It's called chicken, point. chicken motherhood. Yes, that's right. She's a chicken mom. That's and, right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, th this is filling some of her cup, but because she would like to have 17,000 children. That's right. Right. Um, you know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't it's, fill my cup all the, the way. It's not the same. It's not the right? same. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love the dogs. I love the chickens. I love all of it. I want to mother everything that I can possibly find, but it's, there's still this void. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell everybody this beautiful thing that you did. Okay. We, so we were going to start to foster again. Yeah. So we yeah. decided with my husband being healthier now, you know, he's a very self-aware managing severe narcissist is what he calls himself. And, um, he doesn't have, he, he controls the symptoms. So he's not, he's no longer emotionally dangerous. He's not physically dangerous. He's it's, it's amazing. Anybody that is struggling with anything like that, talk to my husband, because if he can overcome it, you can overcome it. I got you. Yeah. So, um, we decided to look, look into again, doing the foster care system. And my goal would be to foster children. And eventually some of these children are going to go up for adoption. I want to have more children ultimately at some point in our life. I just know that they're not going to come from my body which for reasons that we talked about earlier, the IVF, the pain, the sickness, all of those sorts of things. And they, I'd be, I'm considered a geriatric pregnancy after 35, which is ridiculous. You're considered geriatric pregnancy. So both of my pregnancies were geriatric, which is so crazy to me, but the older I get, the more difficult it's going to be and the higher risk comes with it. So we decided that we would re Oh, reopen, <clears throat> revisit foster, 
yeah, yeah. like open up the application again, revisit foster. And so we were starting the application again. Some of you know, we're, we're leaving the country. And so we don't have an opportunity right now to be able to do that. And so when we were doing the foster application process, you can be a respite or respite worker. And usually what that means, it means a, a few different things, but in the foster system, you actually kind of babysit kids that are in the foster care system for the foster parents. So they will come for the day, for the night, for a few nights. And in the US, it looks like they call respite 72 hours to two weeks. So it's a temporary time when you're helping out foster parents that need help with their foster kids. So because we couldn't complete the application, when we were going through it actually, before we knew we couldn't um, complete it, the lady said to me, to be a so to be a foster care family, it takes the better part of a year, sometimes longer, sometimes a little bit less, and there's multiple home visits, but to be a respite care worker, it's a lot faster of a process. So I said, if that's faster, I would, I would be willing to do respite now. How, you know, how do we get it going faster? And she said, well, I guess actually you'd hack, you don't have to be an approved foster care home, but there are these hoops that you have to jump through. Why don't you put it out to the foster care, um, it, we'll see if, see if you can find some off, put an offer out there is basically what she said. And I didn't know where to put an offer out. So what I did was there's a, a group here called mamas for mamas in the city that we live in. And so I made a post and I, I it was just very open. I said, this is going to be really unconventional. Here's who I am. I am a mom of twin girls. I have a baby. We've decided not to do another round of IVF. My heart is not ready to not have kids, but we've decided not to do it. But my, my I still have so much room and it would, it would be a win-win. So if there's a, a mom or moms that need help financially, if you're having relationship struggles, if you have postpartum depression and you need a break, send me a message because whether it's a couple hours, if they're formula fed and you have a pack and play, I'll take them overnight. I'm a twin mom. I can, I can handle more than one message me. So I sent, I put, put out the post. I got quite a few messages and twice already we've had twins overnight. Did you feel a, first of all, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, baby. Such a beautiful message you wrote. And then, you know, this, this mom, young 24, 23, 23, she, she needs support. You know, single mom, yeah. 23 years old with infant twins. Yeah. And, um, you know, so the, the mom got the break she needed. Did you feel like you got your baby fix? I got my baby fix. I said, <laughs> so we've had these babies twice. And I said to my husband, I don't know if it was yesterday or today. I said, I wish that we would have known this all along because I, now that I can, now that I know that I can do this and I can, for lack of a better word, borrow other people's babies. And not just have them like it's not like I'm babysitting. I get to I get to mother them. I have them overnight. I get to this is where I'm crazy. I like to get up at nighttime. It yes, it makes me tired, but like there's something in me that Most loves. I love the nurturing side of getting up with a baby in the middle of the night. He never had to get up with babies because mm -hmm. I was like, go back to bed. <laughs> Sometimes he would get up and hand them to me because I was so <laughs> tired. I was breastfeeding. But something in me just likes that nurturing side of, and I know I'm not parenting these sweet little gentlemen that we've had that we had over, but just like I got to help the mom and I got to be there for these sweet little boys. I got to fill my cup with this mm -hmm. nurturing side that my senior dogs don't, don't do for me. My baby chickens, they don't do for me. It's, I need, I need babies. And I said, I wish I would have discovered this earlier because this fills the void of wanting to have more babies. This is so powerful. This is like accidentally doing momentum. It was in, it was in, it was in, it was in a, it's a complete accident that I discovered. So if you know, if you've seen our app and, or my app and you've seen, um, it's called Moro, two R's facing each other, just like the screen here. Um, there's a program called Momentum. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for. I'm trying to get you all to lead others, to make an impact. Find you've, a passion and lead other people to do something similar or the same. That's right. In this case, this never would have been an example that I ever would have come up with because it's not the same. I'm just here to support my beautiful wife. Okay. But um, in her giving and helping and being there, which is what we should all strive to do more of, what happens? You fill your own cup, right? I mean, you're super excited when we when we get down to the states. You can't wait to have like, you know, every room with oh, baby I said, chairs. Oh, I I can't like, wait to get there. I'm gonna get because when we had twins, we had we had a, quite a large home, and I had two bouncy chairs here, and two bumbo chairs here, and two mm. high chairs here, and I had two of everything, and they were all around the house. So that if I had to go to the bathroom, babies went to the bathroom with me. Mm. If I had to do something in the kitchen, babies were in the kitchen with me, and I can't wait to get down to our new house and have two of everything everywhere, so that no matter what, because that was the struggle with the boys that we had, is I don't have stuff. It all mm -hmm. happened very, very quickly. I don't, I don't have two of everything. I don't even have one of everything anymore. So mm -hmm. it made it a little bit more challenging because I was like making sure the baby's only one of them can crawl, but like, is the gate closed? Are the dogs put away? 
you know, like how do I feed them? How but do just, I just listen to her excitement? That is the whole point. Look at how her mind is racing, all positive. Some of you guys got to learn that if you fill your own cup, you can bring back totally different energy to your home. You're so excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I think you made me a deal. Um, well, since there's when, there, when there's a baby, it's going to be round one, but there's two babies. So two rounds today, <laughs> right? Like that's because she's so happy, you guys. And she's thankful for, that's me, for me. That's me appreciating my husband, allowing me to do something that I really want to do that I mm -hmm. know does not fill his cup at all. At all. I'm not really into the baby. I mean, I held one of them was like, oh, this is kind of cute again. But, and they're like making yeah. eyes at you from across the room and like goo goo gaga at you. And yeah, it's yeah. pretty cute. I had to pull one of them into bed with me the first night that we got here. So it's like four in the morning and I was like, I'm not going to get up at four in the morning. So I'm like cuddling with him in bed and he's crawling over to Cass and he's reaching out to the beard and then pulling back, reaching out to the beard. <laughs> and he a couple times touched him. And so in the morning, Cass was like, yeah, he kept touching me. I was like, you have no idea how hilarious it was because he kept crawling over and like reaching his hand out. <laughs> It was so cute. Just remember this. You know, of course, we're not telling you to go take somebody else's kids. Not if that's not your passion. Especially, plus, we, we don't know you. We're not liable for Yeah. You, but <laughs> but what we are saying is pay attention to the joy it brings you to give. The world needs a lot more of that, you guys. There's a reason why we gave this Momentum program away on the app. If you haven't seen it, go, go join it. It's free. Like, go learn how to fill your cup because it changes everything in a struggling marriage. It really does. It changes everything for like, just clearing up the fog for feeling so proud of who you are and just making you happy. Well, you and <clears throat> one of the things that you just said in, in a struggling marriage, so our marriage isn't struggling anymore, but I still often struggle with wanting to have another baby. Mm. I've always wanted to have four kids. We have, we've had three. I still feel like I could still do it even though the pregnancy would be hard. And so, you know, we're not in a struggling marriage, but doing something that fills my cup makes our strong marriage even stronger because Correct. it helps. It gives me what I need. It allows me to give what I want to give. And then I appreciate my husband so much. And he look at, you can even hear his appreciation for who I am. He's talking about how wonderful it is that I'm doing this and speak. So it, it can form this bond between the two of you that I, I mean, I'm actually so surprised that this is even affecting us the way that it is. It's so good. I thought he was like doing me a favor, letting me take the babies, but it's, it's really actually bringing us closer together. hundred percent. That's what it's all about. You guys. Everything you do from struggling to winning, everything should bring you closer together. And a lot of that is dependent on you starting to make your moves. You know, in fact, I dare say all of it is for each of you listening. But mm -hmm. okay, guys, we'll see you later. Bye.